Hey guys, how are we all? About five weeks ago, I did a video on how to build a 450 horsepower Fiverr engine. And we got that together and got it in the car. And you're probably wondering why we haven't done any videos of updates of, of seeing it running. So what's actually happened is we got the engine in the car, got it all started up, got it running, and we went down to the dyno and started tuning it. And we had some problems where the rev limiter was coming in when it wanted to, and it was just misfiring, doing funny things. <laughs> We ran out of time, we ended up taking it off the dyno and we bought the car home. If you've been watching any of the other episodes, we did a turbo conversion on Nick Starlet and it fell into the right time where Nick wanted an ECU, so we pulled the Microtech ECU and the Loom out of the blue car and we went and put it into his car, which left me with no ECU. I went to Haltech and we ordered an Elite 1500 and a Loom and I spent the last few weeks trying to work out where the wires go and to um, group the wires all together and terminate that so we have a new harness to go back in the blue car. The reason I've upgraded to the Haltech is it has a lot more inputs and outputs for sensors and things like that. So with the Microtech we have here, it's more than capable for a lot of the standard applications and basic turbo stuff. We have four ignition outputs, four injector outputs, TPS, water temp, air temp, two auxiliary inputs, three auxiliary outputs and it's a great little ECU, they're around 800 bucks. Then you've got the Haltech. We got four ignition, four injector, knock sensor, flex fuel, long-term learning, so it auto-tunes itself. We've got drive-by-wire, throttle control, variable cam control. This is for the K-series Hondas, for example. Data logging, rolling anti-lag, traction control, launch control, and more inputs for extra sensors. So if you want to use like extra pressure sensors or temperature sensors, you can rig that up and pick your wires and, and wire that in pretty easily. Um, I mentioned just before that we were having coil problems. I tracked down these coils which are the ones that I listed in the video that you should buy. Um, the part number is 909192256. Now these are perfect height and diameter to slide straight down the starlet tubes. And I've got the weld ons here on the rocker cover. So then you can bolt those up and away you go. Now these are about $200 if you buy them genuine from Toyota. These claim to be genuine Toyota, but say on eBay they're made in China and these are $25 each with free delivery. So I don't know if they're gonna be any good yet. Wait till I try them and we'll see. But yeah, they fit straight in the barrel there and um, away you go. So here you've got the Haltech unit. We can already see there is an absolute shit ton more pins in the back there for all the different inputs and outputs. And not to mention the size difference, it's a lot bigger. So when you buy this, you buy it with the ECU by itself. It's about $2,100 just for the unit. And then you need to buy a wiring loom on top of that and all the extra sensors and things as well. All right, so when you've got the basic ECU here, uh, uh, when you've got the basic loom here, it just comes as a running universal loom. You need to group and separate these wires to go to your different sensors, injectors, coils, and that sort of thing. I'm not going to go into detail of what I've done here, as this is my first Haltech loom that I've wired up, but I'm going to put a few links and stuff in the description to go to the YouTube page, and there's Dave on there who does a lot of wiring videos and can explain things a lot better. So when I purchase the unit, I've got these four sensors here and these are going to be used for the wheel speed sensors. And I've also gone ahead and bought a single wideband controller kit. Which basically, we can monitor the air fuel ratios and keep an eye on that. This is the computer box, but I've gone and thrown in all the different plugs and connectors that I need. You know, if you look at this here, we have TPS connector. Now these connectors, you can buy all these Toyota connectors from efihardware.com.au and it's better to buy the new connectors with the new pins and then they plug straight onto your factory stuff. Here we have Toyota 4 pin distributor, so that goes straight on the 4 EFT distributor. And then we have these, um, these are Deutsch um, bus receptacles. So this is a 4 pin one, so if we have one power wire going in, it connects them all together and then we have three power wires coming out. These also come in a six pin option and these are great for doing um, signal grounds and having uh, multiple power circuits and things like that. We've got these Deutsch connectors here. So this is a three pin one, which is gonna be for the map sensor, a two pin one, which is gonna be for the boost controller. And we've got this is a miscellaneous one, which I've got a couple of five volt wires, an earth and a 12 volt wire to go to. And then we have drive by wire as well. We have the Yaris coil connectors and we have a knock sensor as well, which is just a, a Bosch sensor and the stud, you can buy those genuine straight from the dealership. And here we've got a four bar map sensor also from Haltech as well. 
So need to go and terminate all these now, put the pins, connectors and all the heat, heat shield and that on there and we'll be ready to put that straight back in the car. So I've drilled a new hole in my firewall to run the engine loom out of and we've put all the heat shield and all the um, sheathing on and it's turned out really nice. So here's usually where the factory temperature sensor goes and I've replaced this with an adapter and this sensor that has four wires so now we have pressure and temperature for water. We also have the same thing for the oil pressure unit down the bottom so we have oil temperature and oil pressure now at the bottom and we've got the same sensor as well on the top of the fuel pressure regulator so we can have fuel pressure and fuel temperature as well. We've got all the co coils wired in, that's turned out really neat and we have all the injectors wired in as well. Again, remember all these are all brand new plugs and pins from that EFI hardware. It just makes the job look really nice. And I've also gone and added in, we've got a crank, um, crank sensor here. So I'm going to be getting a trigger wheel to put on the front of my new Ross balancer. And we'll be able to run a, a trigger system off the front of that. And that's going to help with um, yeah, the RPM signal for that. So I'm really happy how the way that's turned out. I mean, the amount of wires and sensors that's coming through the engine bay, and I mean, look how thin the, wire, the wiring loom is. It's smaller than my thumb, so I'm really impressed with that. This wiring grommet's off a Suzuki Grand Vitara, and it fits straight in the factory hole. It's a lot more flexible than the standard Starlet unit that usually is there. So there really isn't much to go, and then we'll be starting soon. Now, the worst part about this car is I've spent hours and hours and hours doing this loom properly and the worst part about it now is sooner or later we're going to have to get another one and do the back engine as well. Now if Howtech's still watching this, I do have a 1500 in the front and now I'm trying to work out whether I put a 1500 in the rear or step up to the 2500. So if you are watching and you've got some ideas of why I should or shouldn't do this, just pop a comment below and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks guys.